We're going to focus on radical cystectomy, a procedure that we're familiar with, but uh, understand several key points associated with it. The morbidity, the learning curve required, the cost associated with the procedure, and the importance of local control and oncologic outcomes. Unfortunately, today, uh, the average resident actually completes four cystectomies and diversions during their entire residency. So we've, we're taking a complicated procedure and in essence um, um, putting our patients in this situation. And so then it attempts to move to minimally invasive surgery. I mean, you all are all familiar with the robotic approaches and the uh, uh, attributes that have people have claimed to be helpful in terms of doing robotics as opposed to an open approach. So in the U.S., uh, this is a slide that uh, uh, goes out to 2012, um, and, and right now in 2017, about 30 to 35 percent of uh, radical cystectomies are done via robotic-assisted uh, method, and that's been a slow increase, uh, very different from the rapid rise of radical prostatectomy, and there are different reasons for that. So um, different, I think, four main comparison points looking at robotic versus uh, open procedures and open radical uh, cystectomy. And I'm going to go over each of these and, and have a variety of, of, of data. And that's part of the issue when it comes to looking at robotic versus open. You can consider the prostatectomy data, which is basically non-existent in terms of quality when looking at, at randomized trials or anything like that. You can look at a number of single institution uh, reviews, uh, meta-analyses, you can look at retrospective reviews, and you can do comparative effectiveness uh, research in terms of comparison studies. And there's a wide variety, and a couple studies that I'm going to focus on. One is this meta-analysis that looked at a variety of trials, both random, uh, randomly, uh, randomized control trials, as well as perspective, as well as retrospective, but an attempt that actually had direct comparison points. And this meta-analysis showed some data that favored the robots, some data that showed actually favored the open approach, uh, and we'll focus on different things specifically on those four areas of comparison. First, if we look at morbidity and complications, I think key points would be complications themselves, the mortality rate associated with it, and readmission. And I'm going to start off with radical cystectomy itself, the standard open approach that we know is actually high risk. Uh, I don't know if the complication uh, rate is now at 60 percent, but it's been published that high with a mortality rate of about 3 percent historically. If you look at our review of uh, more than 700 patients over a seven-year time period, this is what we tell our patients. Uh, we have a readmission rate, about 20%. Uh, and overall, within that 90-day time period of almost more than uh, actually 25% of our patients come back to a hospital, either our location or some other facility, and we quote a mortality rate of 7% within the first 90 days. Uh, and that's a significant uh, a mortality rate that needs to be explained and discussed with every patient. If you look at uh, the uh, reasons for this, the number of complications are, I think, are, are very common and familiar to those that do the procedure. The most common are bowel-related uh, as well as infection-related, uh, and our overall reoperation rate is 2%. Of those that are readmitted, almost 10% actually undergo a procedure. Um, looking at the data that's been published in other series, this is not too far off from other large institutional series looking at open radical cystectomy rates uh, and the concerns not only with readmission but overall mortality rate. So you look at that and then you look at early series looking at the robot. Now, importantly, again, none of these were direct. These are basically here's our institution, this is what we're able to achieve, a complication rate of 20, 25, 30, 35 percent. Uh, if you look at, and then the meta-analysis that I just told you about, the overall complication rate, if you took all complications, the actually complication rate in this meta-analysis actually favored the robotic approach. But if you break down and look at every single grade, grade one, grade two, grade three complications, the only difference really, actually if you go back, the only uh, difference that you can see was actually in grade four. The most serious complications, grade five, there was no difference between the open and robotic in this meta-analysis, and the lower grade complications were not any more frequent with the robot versus the open. We looked at a specific uh, uh, issue with ureteral stricture rates, and we had a feeling, or we thought at our own institution, that we had a higher stricture rate associated with a robotic approach. And in talking to those uh, people that do a quite a few robotic approaches, I think 
early on, there clearly was a tendency to uh, over dissect our ureters, and there was a higher stricture rate. But in essence, in following them out for a period of time, there did not seem to be a specific indication or incidence rate associated with a higher stricture rate. What about the learning curve? We talked about the morbidity. Learning curve, I think, is, is essential. This is actually um, a, a group of so-called experts that got together looking at uh, open radical cystectomy and what those uh, individuals thought were actually important in terms of what's the minimum required uh, to do a cystectomy uh, in a way that would be oncologically effective, uh, that you'd have to do at least 10 cases per year. Uh, the overall positive margin status rate should be less than 10%. Um, your standard pelvic lymph node dissection should be done at least 80% of cases, and the lymph node yield 10 to 14. This was published more than 10 years ago. When you have this learning curve, I think transitioning, you need to understand that you have a difficult procedure that then you take into account a learning curve. You've only increased, I think, the difficulty of being able to do it successfully. And you take into account the number of cystectomies normally done by those finishing training it becomes a very daunting task. So these are actually slides uh, that are courtesy of Raj Pruthi, uh, who has looked at perhaps where is the inflection point in terms of I've gotten enough experience to do this in a safe and a successful manner. So if you look at blood loss, it's about probably 20 to 25 cases where beyond that there wasn't a significant difference in terms of the blood loss. The first 20 to 25 actually contributed to the learning curve. If you look at operative time, the case point is about probably between 35 and 40, where you've significantly improved your operating room time, but beyond that, you don't get much better. And if you look at lymph node count, really early on within 15 to 20 cases, your lymph node count does not increase in any number. So um, those numbers seem reasonable, but understand this is a learning curve that continues to show significant difference early on in your experience. So when looking at then uh, associated with the learning curve, certain things I think would take into account, okay, how much have you been able to learn? How much have you been able to do? Uh, and certain things I think do, do show a benefit in the robotic approach and the meta-analysis would, would agree with that. I, I think in every retrospective institutional series in every meta-analysis and actually in the prospective trials I'll talk about, there's a decreased blood loss associated with a robotic approach, much like the data associated with robotic prostatectomy. In line with that and verifying that is a decrease or a lower transfusion rate associated with a robotic approach and perhaps a decrease in length of stay. Third comparison point, cost. Uh, this is uh, actually an evaluation looking at if we looked at certain fixed costs associated with the radical cystectomy and when we looked at variable costs and you, then you look at overall hospitalization rates associated with uh, a robotic versus an open cystectomy. And in this series, you see that the difference is almost $2,000 in favor of an open approach. If you look at the OR fixed costs, the robotic is actually much higher. And that's associated with the equipment that's, that's required. The OR variable rates really was, were not that much different. Uh, and if you look at the hospital stay, there was a slight benefit in terms of the robotic approach, but overall a higher cost for the robotic approach. And I think this is true in, in, in this series. And uh, in the memorial series, and I'll talk about this study specifically later on in the talk, there also was a similar difference in cost favoring the open approach. If you look at an orthotopic diversion, that difference was uh, almost $4,000. And if you look at the open approach, the difference is very similar to that previous study, about a $2,000 advantage for the open robotic approach. I'm sorry, the open approach versus the robotic approach. You know, study data is, is important. Uh, it really is the foundation for much of what we do. But if you talk with uh, the health outcomes folks as well, they'll talk to you that it's important to also take into account real world experiences, real world accounts. So Jim Hu uh, looked at, at actually SEER uh, Medicare data and looked at actually the overall cost of a robotic versus an open approach. And interestingly, within the hospitalization with actual patients that undergo a cystectomy, either robotic or versus open, not in a trial situation or, or in a comparison standpoint, there was actually not a difference in cost statistically. 
a slightly higher number of robotic versus open, but you can actually see the difference in the 30-day and 90-day mortality rate, or not mortality, but cost. I'm not really sure why. There's some variables I'll talk about, but more costly over time with a robotic approach as compared to the open approach, verifying what we found in, in the trial data. All right, most importantly, and I think that what we're still gaining information on is what about the oncologic issues associated with this. And, uh, in, ineffective surgery here in these patients is truly a life-altering and a life-threatening uh, uh, ongoing process. And we know that the impact of an effective surgery is essential to these patients' overall survival and success rates. Uh, this is actually data based upon the SWOG trial looking at certain surgical indicators that predicted how patients actually did. If you looked at this, improved post-cystectomy survival was associated with negative margins and increased number of lymph nodes removed. If you had a positive margin, your chance of dying was three times greater than if you had a negative margin. Now, some of that may be associated, obviously, with disease biology, but clearly that's an independent risk factor for dying from disease when a positive surgical margin is left behind. In addition, the greater the lymph nodes removed uh, seems to also correlate with survival. Predictors of local recurrence are also associated with that positive margin status and the number of lymph nodes removed. And clearly, the quality of the surgery impacts patients' outcomes. So looking at the positive surgical margin rate, um, this is actually early data looking at organ-confined versus non-organ-confined disease. And again, you can see that um, right now there's not a lot of data comparing one versus the other in this review in terms of the ultimate outcomes. But if you look at the meta-analysis, I'll go back, if you look at the meta-analysis of, again, more than 19 studies looking at the positive surgical margin rate, there actually was no statistical difference between the open versus robotic approach. Um, uh, again, assume, assuming that that would correlate to oncologic outcomes is a bit of a loop of faith. So what about lymphadenectomy, another quality indicator? You know, the, the question is, um, you know, is it, should it be here at this iliac artery bifurcation? Should it be higher up in the common iliac artery? Should it be at the aortic bifurcation? Should it be higher? Should it be at the IMA? And I, I think Dr. Lerner, who, who was kind enough to share his talk with me, is going to talk a little bit about uh, that as a quality indicator, again, associated with cystectomy. Uh, and the issue with robotic is, are we able to actually get the number of lymph nodes? None of these trials show the actual geographic or, or rather anatomic distribution of their lymph node dissection. It just went with a simple node count, which is perhaps a surrogate, but probably is not a total complete picture of what's going on with the dissection. But, you know, in these Me Too series, look what I've done. You have a, an overall lymph node count of 18, 20, 25, 30, et cetera. If you look at the meta-analysis, actually, in the comparison of these trials, it was a slightly higher yield within the robot in terms of the number of lymph nodes removed. Um, now, in essence, and I'll talk in terms of my conclusion, what I, what I personally think, but there clearly is not a decreased number of lymph nodes removed with the robotic approach. Uh, and, that, and that's been verified, uh, I think, in other studies as well. So, Ultimate outcomes, what about survival? This is a, a slide that's been shown many, many times in the USC series in terms of how patients do with organ-confined disease. The ultimate success rate is quite high. Those with extravascular disease, obviously that decreases. But even in patients with actually lymph node positive disease, a proportion of patients still survive. And so this again talks about and emphasizes the importance of an effective cystectomy. Early on, people were wondering about this. And so this is short-term data, uh, 12 months, uh, two years, less than two years. You have recurrence-free survival rates that are actually quite good, way too early to make a conclusion. And these were early on series regarding very well and carefully selected patients. Those patients that were higher risk were not put in these categories, but these were early proof of principle that we think we're doing a good job. And to these authors' credits, each one of these that, 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 that I know personally, they were very careful in terms of selecting their patients. So the earlier reviews actually showed that early on there seems to be a, a benefit. 
um, Memorial actually reviewed their open series versus the Robotica series in, in a longer follow-up and showed that basically with the open, you had follow-up between 34 to 120 months and this short-term follow-up with the robotic-assisted series. Early reviews showed that it seems to be very good in terms of overall cancer-specific success. So these are some of the more recent kind of my institution, my retrospective review. Um, this is an interesting one because this is from Roswell Park. And, and um, the, the physicians there have basically said they have not done an open cystectomy for more than five years. Not a single patient at their institution has had an open bladder removal. And this is basically all comers, they say, all have gotten a robotic cystectomy. And, and this is what their uh, five-year results are. And if you look at overall, uh, the success rate is similar to actually all comers for an open cystectomy series. Uh, if you look by stage, uh, as one would expect for organ confined, very similar, 80% five-year survival. It drops as the disease becomes either outside or not, no longer organ confined. So similar, not comparative, but similar success in terms of, of uh, five-year recurrence-free survival rates. And if you look at uh, another series, this is the Cornell series, who also do the majority now of their cystectomies via a robotic approach. Similar, I'm sorry, similar all comers, um, a, a success rate five years of 75, 80% in terms of cancer-specific survival at five years. Again, looking at comparative effectiveness research, those were basically single institution, look what we've done with experts that have done a, a, a big number of robotic cystectomies. This is actually SEER data uh, looking at um, a, a matched series of patients, uh, robotic assisted versus open, and this was just published actually less than a year ago. And actually for a follow-up of actually almost four years, there was no difference in cancer-specific survival in those patients that had a robotic versus open approach uh, in Medicare or in SEER data. So these are all comers. These are claims data for anyone over the age of 65 that had this procedure. This is a success rate so far with cancer safety. Uh, now, again, are these cohorts exactly the same? No. Are they um, understanding in terms of differences in terms of morbidity and mortality? No. But looking at all comers, there was no difference in cancer-specific survival at a follow-up at almost four years. So there was some concern, uh, and one that I definitely had, about atypical recurrences, recurrences that were occurring uh, in places that we don't normally actually see. And this was actually first reported, this is from, from Cornell, and actually uh, this institution, this group, actually was the first to bring up the fact that the, the, the pneumoperitoneum, that this robotic approach, that spilling of tumor, that location of recurrence may be affected by this technique. They've gone back and looked at their series, and actually their conclusion now is that those patients with atypical recurrences were actually no different than those that had recurrences at, at quote-unquote normal distance sites and at common locations, and that there seemed to be no difference, again, not a prospective randomized trial, but in terms of their retrospective review, they couldn't find a difference in terms of more likely having an atypical recurrence associated with the robotic approach. I told you about the meta-analysis that had 19 different studies, prospective, some retrospective, some too randomized. This is actually the most recent meta-analysis that looked at only the randomized controlled trials, and these are the conclusions. Robot was better, less blood loss, about 250 cc's less. Quicker time to diet, 1.1 days. Shorter operative time, favor the open approach. Saved more than an hour doing an open approach versus a robotic approach. No differences in complication rate, no differences in positive surgical margin rate, no differences in lymph node count. Again, looking at real-world world data, this is Jim Hu's study. What were their conclusions? Very similar. Shorter length of stay by a day. Uh, more likely, actually, to have more comorbidities. Actually, sicker patients now were in the robotic arm compared to the open arm. 
Uh, but interestingly, they needed more home health. Now, that may have contributed to actually higher costs associated with the follow-up, uh, which was the same study that I show you at 30 days and 90 days that the robot was more expensive. That may be associated with the fact that these were sicker patients to start off with. Hard to tell. Can't tease that out from this data. But similarly, no difference in major complications, respiratory complications, or ICU admissions associated with the robot versus open approach. So in summary, I, I think overall, I think they're comparable in terms of lymph node yield and complications, short-term quality of life. I think the benefits, less blood loss, maybe half a day, maybe in terms of recovery and length of stay. And I think Dr. Um, I think Peter's going to talk a little bit about optimizing uh, cystectomy and outcomes. Clearly, I think there is a longer time in the operating room. It is more expensive. There is a learning curve and long-term outcomes still remain uncertain. And so two trials that I'll mention and focus on, one is this memorial trial, which has gotten a lot of press, was, uh, was actually first introduced via a letter to the New England Journal. And what they found were very similar findings, increased time, lower blood loss, no difference in complications, no difference in length of stay, margins, et cetera. They found it was more expensive. Caveats to that trial. I applaud them for doing uh, an attempt for a randomized prospective trial. Only 25% of patients actually were randomized. Secondly, you had people who'd done thousands of open cystectomies versus a robotic surgeon that was experienced in robotic pelvic surgery. In reality, had done very few robotic cystectomies prior to the initiation of this trial. Blood transfusion rate was not included in complications. My understanding was that there was actually a difference in, in blood transfusions. Quality of life was actually measured at three months, not earlier on, where it may have benefited the robot. And there was a significant difference in terms of OR time. Interestingly enough, uh, three quarters of the patients robotically went to the aortic bifurcation versus less than half in the open. And that may have contributed to the longer operating room time in the robotic approach. I think this trial is very important, the RAZOR trial. And this is actually one that's multi-institutional prospective. And the folks who here specifically will be a randomized trial that's actually finished accrual, looking specifically at oncologic efficacy at three-year mark. And hopefully we'll have that data actually at this year's AUA. So no clear superior, I think. What do I do? I do both. Uh, I think ongoing studies are essential to determine the long-term oncologic efficacy. Probably three-quarters of, of cystectomies I do now robotically. Importantly, though, and I want to emphasize this, is this data actually really deals with extracorporeal urinary diversion. All right, this is a whole different category when we start talking about intracorporeal diversion, where I think the advantages or, or the disadvantages of robotic approaches may actually lengthen even more with longer OR times, increased cost. So where do we go from here? You know what? I, I don't think we should spend so much time talking about robotic versus open cystectomy. I think it's a technique. We need to know the long-term oncologic uh, data. And some of the, the talks that we'll get today, I think, are areas we should focus on more. The importance of clinical pathways and enhanced recovery. Uh, the importance of patient education and optimization prior to any of these significant treatments. Risk stratification, uh, as well as perhaps focusing cystectomies at centers of excellence. Uh, and so I'm going to stop there and, and thank you again for your attention.